Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour of a Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3. Hopefully you'll be able to see the components you're trying to access and uh, hopefully it'll help you do whatever it is you're trying to do. Uh, so first thing guys, power down the computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're going to flip it over to access our bottom case screws. Now before we can get at our screws guys, there's actually two screws on this side um, in the back of your laptop you have to unscrew first. And then you take a small flat, preferably plastic pry tool. I say plastic because it'll scratch your computer less uh, than a metal one. But then you're gonna go along this seam right here and pry off this panel from your computer. Once that panel is removed, it will reveal this part of your computer, which has a couple screws that we've got to get at to take this bottom case off. To take the bottom case off, you would undo all of these screws, and then you would use that same flat pry tool to go along the seam, pry your bottom case up from your computer. After you've gotten your bottom case up, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now, before touching anything inside a computer, guys, I always either remove or unplug my battery. It just makes the computer safer because there's less power running through it, less chance to damage things. Your battery is right here. It's held in by four screws. If you want to physically remove your battery, if you want to simply unplug it, this is the battery plug right there. That black plug that goes into the metal port, you would pull this plug down toward the battery to unplug it. Okay, so once your battery is removed or unplugged, it'll be safer to proceed further into the computer. Um, as a side note, guys, I have my computer sitting on an anti-static pad when I'm working on them. Either that or an anti-static bracelet. These are great ideas to avoid damaging anything inside the computer when you're poking around inside. So any tools or supplies like that, as well as any of the replacement or upgrade parts that we're going to go over, there'll be a link above, also below in the description where you can get all those tools and supplies and all the replacement parts for the Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3 in case you want that. So the next thing I'm going to show you in this computer, guys, is the RAM. It's right here. Uh, this cover or shield over the RAM is not screwed down or fastened down at all. You just... Uh, gently, slowly pry it up. Once you do, you'll see these two RAM ports here. Now, the way you use these RAM ports, guys, there's two metal arms. You see one on, on either side. They're spring-loaded. So to get the RAM stick out, you would put your fingers on those metal arms. You would gently pry them apart away from the RAM stick, and the RAM stick would then release. Um, usually, the RAM stick would even pop up a little bit, and you can grab it and, and take it out of the port. To put the RAM stick back in, as you see here, there's a long side of the RAM stick port and a short side of the port. So you can only put that RAM stick in one way, the correct way. You won't be able to put it in upside down. But when you get that in there nice and flush, then you press right in the center here, press it down, and those metal arms um, latch onto it, and, and it'll hold it in, in place. Now, as far as the RAM, guys, a little information for RAM. I think this computer takes a total of 64 gigabytes of RAM. Um, so that means you can have two 32 gigabyte sticks in here if you wanted to max out your RAM or anything under that. And again, some RAM options uh, will be below in, in the description. Uh, for your information, this also takes DDR5. Um, and the exact stick that I found in here was PC54800B. Uh, now, as far as your solid state drive, we'll move on to that. You see a smaller 42 millimeter one here. And there's a longer port here for an 80 millimeter. I'm pretty sure this takes up to Gen 3 and this smaller one, Gen 4. Uh, but you have two different solid state drive ports. They both operate the exact same way. On the little one, it's plugged in here with a single screw on the right center holding it down. And then this one, the port is up here with a single screw down here on the center holding it down. So that's how you would unplug and then plug in solid states in those two M.2 ports. And again, I'll have some options below in, in the description. The next thing we'll show you guys, move over here, this is your CMOS battery. Uh, it's held on by double-sided tape. So if you're looking to replace this, you can pop that up fairly easily. And the red and black wires plug into the motherboard here. Now, just like the main battery or anything in a laptop, try not to pull on the wires if you can help it. Um, use your fingernails or a pry tool on either side of that plug to jimmy it out out of that port. 
if you're looking to replace it. Um, also, if you're looking to just reset BIOS this way, which is uh, sometimes referred to as a manual BIOS reset, you just have to hold that out or unplug it for 15, 20 seconds, and that should reset your BIOS system. Uh, the next little component, guys, this is your Wi-Fi card here underneath the fan. Uh, the antenna wire, the black and white wires come out of here, they wrap around your fan, and they go up through this hinge assembly. Um, and those are just snaps. Those aren't plugs. Those just snap right off of, of the Wi-Fi card. And then it's held down by a single screw right there, kind of like your solid state drive. And after removing that screw, this Wi-Fi card will pull out of this port here. Uh, moving on, guys, you're looking at your touchpad assembly down here. You can see the touchpad ribbon cable come up and plug in here. Uh, your keyboard ribbon cable is a lot larger one, plugs in here. If you guys are looking um, to do anything with your touchpad or your keyboard or with your USB board here, these type of ribbon connector clips are very fragile. Um, they're easy to break. I'll play a quick clip right now showing you how you can maneuver these clips safely. Okay, so to take a ribbon cable out of this kind of connector, first you have your ribbon cable here, you have the port on the motherboard, and then you have this retainer clip over here. This clip opens and shuts like a book cover. It opens from this side and the hinges are on this side. So in order to get that up, be very careful. Take a small flat pry tool, slide it underneath and pop it up like that. And then the ribbon cable can come out. After taking the ribbon cable out, I like to put it back down for safekeeping so it doesn't get caught on anything and rip. These are very, very breakable, these retainer clips. And if you break it, you're most likely not going to be able to find a replacement, um, in which case your ribbon cable won't be able to uh, secure down anymore. So be very careful. To get the retainer clip back in, you would pop it up again very carefully. You would slide the ribbon cable in nice and flush. It may take a few times if you're not used to it, getting it flush, and then just snap the retainer clip down and that's how you would operate that kind of clip. Okay, so to get at this touchpad, you can see these four screws here, all the way on the touchpad, and then these three screws on the bottom, that'll gain you access to your touchpad. Next thing I'll show you is the speakers. You got this right speaker here, left speaker here. The right speaker doesn't plug into the motherboard anywhere. It's connected to the left speaker by this wire that runs down under your touchpad, and the left speaker connects to the motherboard right here. It's kind of a similar port uh, to the CMOS battery. So again, not grabbing the wire, but using your fingernails or a pry tool is how you would unplug those speakers. Uh, the last thing that I'll show you is this massive heat sink assembly here. Uh, you have two fans, two large vents, and then the heat sink assembly, CPU, GPU areas here. The fans, as you can see, they, they plug in right here, and the other one plugs in right here. Similar plugs to your CMOS battery, you would get it out the same way. Really try to avoid pulling on that wire. The, these fan wires are, are a little more breakable than even these other ones are. Uh, but you can unscrew these heat sink assemblies. You can see the screws here. That They're kind of circled in, in, in orange, all, all the screws around the fan and, and the heat sink assembly. Um, and you can get your heat sink assembly up to access your CPU. GPU. After that, you can blow out, vacuum out your fans if that's why you're here to clean them out. Uh, make sure you don't miss those vents. Inspect for damage to the heat sink if you're having any heating issues. And if you're here to reapply thermal paste, guys, I'm going to have a link above, also below in, in the description. I'll also have it as the ending video in the end screen. Um, but there'll be a quick tutorial on how to apply thermal paste the correct way after cleaning all the old stuff off, which you definitely want to do. So it was a quick tutorial, guys, but I tried to get all the main components in here for you. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you need to leave me a question, please do. I try to get to those a couple times a day at least. And again, any tools or supplies you need or any of these replacement parts, you can usually find in the link below in the description. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.